Oh, I like that. I like that. Between a rock. Listen to this one. It's an unusual fact, but one you'll probably never forget. One North Georgia town is responsible for two thirds of all the headstones in America. We're talking about Elberton, which is known as the granite capital of the world. And for those of you interested in Georgia history, it might just make a perfect day trip this spring. Good day's Paul Milliken is live in downtown Elberton this morning. City's got quite a story to tell there, young forest. <laughs> Life is like a box I sure of do, chocolates. Yeah. Good morning to you. I got my granite too. It's older than I am. Got my chunk of granite this morning. Hanging out downtown right now in a beautiful downtown square. If you haven't been here in a while, there's a lot going on. There's the Samuel Elbert Hotel and the White Plate Restaurant, newly refurbished. That just opened in January of last year. It looks great. You've got the courthouse back there as well. So this downtown area has great bones and a lot of great things happening in the present and the future. However, for this morning, I want to go back to the past. Now, think about this for a minute. A lot of times on TV, you see these stories these days about controversy around Confederate monuments, right? You see that all the time. And it feels like a very modern issue. Well, it turns out it's not a modern issue at all. It was happening here in Elberton more than 100 years ago, and it actually helped launch an entire industry. It's not every city that could get away with a row of headstones as a welcome sign, but the history of Elberton, Georgia is etched in stone, and that stone is granite. Elberton probably produces around two-thirds of all the headstones in the United States. Located about 35 miles east of Athens, Elberton is a city literally built on granite. A river of rock runs under this town, both pristine and plentiful. You're talking about a vein of granite that's 35 miles long, it's about six miles wide, and it's about two to three miles in depth of solid rock. So uh, there is an abundance of granite available, some of which we'll never ever probably get to. But before Elberton was the granite capital of the world with more than 40 granite quarries, this was just a southern town rocked by a scandalous statue. Somewhere around 1895, six, there was um, uh, a group of women that uh, were were interested in preserving the memory of the Confederate veterans who had passed. And so they, they came to a gentleman by the name of Dr. Long, who uh, owned a granite uh, quarry here, and asked him if he could provide a, a granite uh, block so that they could have a statue made. They wanted the statue to be made out of um, Elberton's native stone. And so uh, a block of granite was secured and a sculptor was brought in, and he began to sculpt uh, a statue that would go down on the town square. This is that statue, nicknamed Dutch. It was unveiled in 1898, and let's just say, it did not go over well. The sculptor was a, probably a German immigrant from maybe up north that had not ever seen a Confederate soldier and had no concept of them. So when he sculpted Dutchie, he actually sculpted Dutchie with a Union uniform. The last thing that the people here in Elberton wanted was a, was a statue of a, of a northern uh, Union soldier looking over them. There's a reason Dutchie's on his back these days. Angry townspeople yanked him down in 1900. But as they say, all publicity is good publicity, and the story of the ugly statue made from beautiful granite helped put Elberton on the monument map. But in reality, he got the last laugh because from him spawned this entire granite industry that we have here. And that's how a stone with a head led to this row of headstones. Perhaps an unusual welcome to this Georgia town, but one as unique as the history behind it. So long before Buck Lanford, Dutchie was the most hated man in North Georgia. This is the new monument. Now, guys, when they pulled down Dutchie, they buried him where I'm standing, right down here. And oh, get this, really they tiny. buried him face down. He got no headstone. And when people walk, walk by, according to legend, they would spit on him as they walked by. They did not like Dutchie at all. But he was dug up in 1982. And actually, they had a hard time finding him because he was kind of like an urban legend at that mm -hmm. point. But they found him. They dug him up. And now he's at the Granite Museum. 
by the way, to get them all clean, they took them through a car wash. Dutchie has led quite a life, okay? If Dutchie doesn't deserve a movie, I don't know what does. So Dutchie was taken through the car wash. He was cleaned off. He's now at the Elberton Granite Museum. Now, you guys may know there are a couple of other really notable parts of Elberton. One is the Granite Bowl. Have you been there before, Buck? It's the football stadium behind the courthouse. It's a legendary football stadium mm -hmm. here. It's the old Granite Bowl. Right. It is made out of granite. People love that. And then there's the Georgia Guidestones, a really mysterious monument that attracts visitors from all over the world. And for more on the Guidestones, go to my Facebook page, Paul Milliken Fox 5. I just posted a video there. Hey, Paul. You know, I know a lot of times when you go do these yeah. kinds of stories that people will end up giving you gifts. Did they mm -hmm. give you a Millican headstone as a gift this time? <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> no, unfortunately oh, not yet. Boy. I love it. You know what? It would probably oh, sit at my desk right. if they would. But That'd you know be... what's true? It's perfect, Buck, that in a place built on rock, right. in a town you could call a rocky town, yeah. I've had at least three or four people stop by in cars today and say, you and Buck Lanford, what's going on with you two? You're always <laughs> giving each other the stuff. What's going on with that? People in Elberton and love the Milliken and Lanford dynamic here, uh, rocky here in this relationship. Rocky town. No doubt. Rocky relationship we have for sure. All right, yeah. Paul, thank you. Yeah. And coming up tomorrow morning, we're going on a summer trip and we're taking the RV. Paul is heading to Campers Inn RV of Ackworth to find out what's new in the world of recreational vehicles.